history for fools. What's up? What's up, man? Where were you this weekend? This weekend. Last weekend, I mean. Uh, I did the, did I, oh, yeah, I, I, I think I was at work. I think I just worked this week. I didn't do anything really that exciting. I got a couple shows coming up, but I think I had to stay home this week and kind of hang out at work. How about you? I did two podcasts. I did, uh, well, I did the History for Fools podcast, and then I did the the um fighter and the kid i did the fighter and the kid last week how'd you like fighter and the kid it was fun man like brendan shaw's funny you did adam corolla too right yeah i did adam corolla yesterday and yeah. i did a big ass show in the bay with um cedric entertainer in mountain view right yeah no at the um sap center where the oh in san jose where the, where the sharks play yeah holy shit that place is massive dude that's fucking rad your boy hit me up like an hour before the show birdman oh did he of course he did yo what's up bro i heard you're in town dog got a package for you yeah yeah Leave it somewhere, bro, and just give me the coordinates. Yeah. <laughs> How hard is that? Hide it behind a plant and take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> like when Foo's Got Wild puts up yeah, their, bro. like, their fucking sock check, checker or whatever the fuck. They just, like, are there the, the, the socks? Yeah, just hide it somewhere. Yeah, I also became the, uh, today, actually today, if you're watching this, I became American. I did my uh, hey, my oath. Hey, that's right. Congratulations. I did my oath of U.S. citizenship. Today you are a United <coughs> States citizen. Today, bro, with uh, 1,298 people, I was sworn in. I took the oath and um, get out. That's all I got to say, man. Did you, how, how long did the ceremony take? Well, first of all, man, when I got there. Yeah. There was a line from from here uh-huh. to let's do this on Zoom. Oh it wow! Was far, it was bro. far, bro. Bro, one of those lines where and then it got so long and it, it it reached the edge that people started making a side line somewhere else. Oh no! So that line, the side line, was was all the way even longer. Okay. And those people, every time the real line, which I saw, got smaller. They would walk over and get behind those people. Oh, wow. They were like crisscrossing. So were you like, oh, this might take all day. Bro, somebody recognized me. I started talking to him and never left that line. Oh, yeah, dude. He's like, fuck it, dude. I'll I'll get my citizenship on another day. (laughs) Bro, a a fan recognized me. His wife was getting her citizenship today, too. Oh. And I just stood in line with him. Never looked back, bro. He, He just abandoned her. No, he, he was there. Oh, he was there. He let me cut in. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. So yeah, I cut. As soon, he, he didn't let me. I just, as soon as he recognized me, all right, you want to talk? I'll just Oh, you talk. rolled up there, started talking to him, stayed there. Kind of like the airline trick. But it was, a, bro, it was long, man. I mean. Do they swear in each person or do they swear everybody else? Everybody at once, bro. Like, like, like when you go to court and. Does anybody want to get a job today and everybody raise their hand? Right. And is it like court? You know when you go into court, they say like a long ass half hour shit before they start the actual proceedings? No, man. I, I felt like it... this is the closest I've ever been to graduating from anything. Yeah, dude. Were you excited? Hell yeah, bro. I never got a diploma. I never got anything. You never got none of that before. So this felt like a uh, real graduation. Right. I had my suit on. And, man, there were some people, man, but like the most strongest Morning breath, bro. Uh, I guess I don't get out that much early in the morning around people no more. But man, bro, like it was horrific, bro. I'm glad no, that I was not. Bad. I was not. I'm glad I was, I'm not from Hartford, bro, because I would have been here hearing, hearing Hartford over and over oh. instead of just hearing Pasadena. So man, it, man, it was like, woof, bro. I was trying to hide real bad. And then a woman next to me was speaking to me, uh-huh. and I was like, she didn't give her my. Trying to tell her my eyes, hey man, it ain't me with that bad breath, by the way. Right. Uh- <laughs> but I was trying to get away from it. Like, I even, I even tried to breeze in from the floor, 
from the f- air that's on the floor. Were bro. you panicking for a minute about the breath? Because I do. I no, be. I wasn't. But every, uh, every once in a while, we'll come back. Oh, uh, that's yeah. I don't like any of that. And there was a lady that was helping people, but on the way in, and she, her breath was the same, bro. Right. So yeah, bro, it was pretty bad. You worked pretty hard for this, though. Yeah, you worked really hard for this. Um, how how does it feel though? Like, because one of the things that I love about this is that we just did the American Revolution. Yeah, man. Did you have to learn any of that stuff for that as well? Yes, you do. Okay, you have to learn how this country was founded and all that other stuff. One of the question was why was uh why did we fight the British in the Civil American Revolution? Right. That's interesting. How long did it take? And why do we have a? Why do we have a such and such? And there was a govern. What does um? So there was a president, you know, like even here, not above the law. There's to be checks and balances. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, so you learn all that stuff, right? You um, does like does any of that change your mind about things? No, because all this stuff, you're a history question. You already know it anyway, right? I, I didn't know them all. You didn't know them all. Um, and you've been in this, so you've been in this country. These questions, bro, I'm pretty sure, like, I, I got to, I had to study 100 questions. Right. And they were going to test me on all 100 in the beginning uh, just to test it, my lawyer to test it out. Sure. 50 wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How many are you supposed to get wrong? Six. Oh fuck! No, but uh, when they when because he you gotta know the hundred questions because you don't know which other the hundred gonna ask you. So when you get uh, to do a okay. test in front of the U.S. the U.S.C.I. the the main person, right? They give you the questions. You got they give you seven six questions and you gotta get all six right. Oh wow, that's a lot of pressure, dude. Yeah, dude. So you, so you have to get a hundred percent of those questions right. Yeah. Um. So and there's two. I thought it was a trick questions too, bro. Okay. What was your like, question? Like, what was like one of your questions? One of them was, "Who's Susan B. Anthony?" Who is Susan? Dude, I'm an American citizen. And I said, "Who the fuck is and, Susan and, B. And I said, um, "I mean, I know she's a lady on a coin." <laughs> she, she's a lady who uh, fought for women's rights. Okay. You know, for women to get the yeah. So and then in my head, bro, the first thing that came to my head, and I'm glad they didn't say it. I uh. said, "Well, that's the lady who drowned her two kids and blamed it on a Puerto Rican guy." That's the first thing that came to my head, dog. <laughs> You're like, I got two, I got two, I got two murderers <laughs> stuck together. Oh my! Oh, that's right. Cause what was that lady's name? Susan Anthony. Is it Susan Casey Anthony? Casey Anthony. Casey Anthony is that one lady. That's yeah. right. But who's the lady that said she drowned her kids in the car and blamed it on a black dude? Who was that lady's Susan name? Susan B. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> but then then they asked me, well, like, do I, didn't, I was too nervous the first time. I didn't know who the governor of um, California was. Yeah. I didn't know who the state senator of California was. I didn't know who was uh, um, Speaker of the House. Okay. I didn't know who the mayor of Los Angeles was and who didn't know who my city council, no, I knew my city councilman because he's going to jail. I have no idea who any of those people are that you just named, except yeah. maybe the governor. Yeah, and they asked me, they asked um, who's the lead U.S. Supreme Court justice. Yeah, man. There's a lot of questions that were like that. And you know all those now? Yeah, I know them all now. Who is the lead of Supreme Court Justice? Well, the Speaker of the House is um, Alex Johnson. Okay. And um, our, my senator is Alex Padilla. Oh, okay. That's how I knew. And then they asked me, when was the... Oh, we have Governor Newsom. That's our governor. I'm stupid. Who was the president during World War One? Hold on. It wasn't Hoover. It wasn't Eisenhower. World War One. World War One. Was it Eisenhower? No, the, the way through, I remember. Lisa, I have, dude, that's the a, way. At least help me remember it because World War One. Uh huh. W W Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Oh, this is like a good way to like pass tests and stuff, dude. Yeah, she has a system. Yeah, so Woodrow Wilson, bro, and um, then some of the question was um. 
That's the Bill of Rights. Or, oh, shit, bro. Oh, we're we're starting bell, another. Dude. Oh, man. I'm starting, bro. We got school now. Uh-oh, what's going on here? This is my fucking um, my hot pad, bro. My what? circus hat, I like bro. this, dude. I like this. this is an- Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on earth. You are going to see elephants... <laughs> Strange Odysseys. Uh, uh, we're gonna. You're gonna see a- little Aztecs. You're gonna see. <laughs> you're gonna see. A uh, two-headed man. A, uh, a mermaid. A mermaid. The three-eyed cow. History for fools. What's up, man? History for fools, history, man. History on circuses food. and the history of circuses. <clears throat> I am Felipe Esparza over there with a. Sitting over there at Butch. And um, first of all, let's break it down, man. Um, the first circus, we all know, was in the Roman times. Right. Because um, and, and a circ- the word circus is a Greek word taken from a Latin word for a circle. Right. Circular things. And um, pretty much the, the circus was a place where people would go for entertainment. And um, the Romans did it. The Greek did it. We did it. Mexico did it. Uh, even even um, African American had their own circus here in America called the the Universal Black Circus. Re- oh, really? Yeah, man. And they would uh, they would they would they would juggle, bro, on 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 uh, I want you call it on things. But I remember when I had I had to have a, one of my first jokes about the Universal Circus. Was man, I said, yeah, man, they got black circus now, man. They be juggling forty ounces. I said, yeah, man. Instead of a guy taming lions, he's taming crackheads. He like whipping them with a belt, like booty tang. Get back! Was this <laughs> like your, your first set? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, man, they got they got brothers walking on um on clothing lines. That's funny, dude. Yeah, man, and then man, and then. I remember the black comedian with Tom Anthony, but man, that shit funny as fuck. Yeah, dude. That's funny, dude. Did you ever go to the circuit when you were a kid with your father? Uh, no. Oh, okay. part of the act. So hey. my mom ran a... Uh, Muscle man. My mom ran um, a youth center, and she would take her kids to the circus, so I would go with them. And uh, Circus Vargas. We went to Ringling Brothers for a couple years. And then they stopped giving my mom tickets for some reason, so she got Circus Vargas to give her tickets. <laughs> there was like, and you could see the like, like the like, uh, the quality, the uh, de- the degrad- degradation of quality. Circus Vargas, I'm surprised. I'm, I didn't even look them up, bro. And it's history for fool, history for fools, and I should have because that's the circus that always came around. Right. Yeah. There was more Circus there Vargas. Was free passes for him all the time. There was more Circus Vargas than. Then um, Barnum and Bailey's Ringling Brothers yeah. in our neighborhood. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Circus Vargas always come around. Right. Circus Vargas. See, we had it too. They had the, uh, I used to say, I used to have a joke. They have, they have the gay circuit, Circus Vargas. <laughs> yeah, we used to go to the Circus. Uh, we used to go to the, like, because the Ringling was playing at the uh, Oakland um, Coliseum. And the Coliseum would give my mom free tickets. And so we would go to that, and then Circus. The thing that was cool, though, about Circus Vargas that I liked, man, that I didn't get to experience with Ringling Brothers, was they actually had a tent back then. That's why Circus Vargas always used tents. Right, yeah. And the that's... Rigged, the, there it is. The last time the Ringling Brothers uh, used a tent was in 1957. And so they were always in arenas and stuff. And they were dope, bro. And actually, like, now that I look back at it, dude, as a, as a kid, I would like I was like, ah, this is not as fun as Ringling. But probably now as an adult, I would dig that, like, because some of that shit was like, like, that. I'm not sure that's actually a lion. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, Mer- like Larry Bubbles, Brown said, I saw a zipper. <laughs> Like they put like it looked like they glued some shit on a like on a. Sometimes panther. They, they'll paint a, a horn like a zebra, huh? Yeah, dude, they be doing shit like that. Or a, or it'll be a, a donkey, right? But it's painted like a zebra, and you ask him, "Hey, what is that?" A zebra. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, like the Mondo Circus Casino. Vargas was like more like I don't know, man. And we went to that for a couple more years, but after that, the circus just stopped coming around. And then now there's like the Bay gets this. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a Mexican circus. Um, man, I can't remember the name of it. It's it's popular though. But I, I I've always wanted. Yeah, to- it's very popular. Know what you're talking about? There's a lot. There's been a lot of circus says, Um, you know, um. I used to watch a show called El Chesperito with El Chavo del Ocho. Yeah, I remember watching that as a kid. And a little girl that cries, yeah. Chilindrina. Yeah, the one She had her own tails. circus. Oh, really? In, in Mexico, she would dress up as a Chilindrina. It's, it was called El Circo de la Chilindrina. And look at her. And she had her own circle, circus. And also, you know that guy that El Chavo used to always fight with? The guy with the ball. He would he had a loose. Yeah, yeah, the suspenders. There you go. And pulled up, yeah. Yeah, and he would fight with the other kid. Right. Kiko. He would cry by the wall. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had his own circus. No that way. That toured in Mexico and South America. It was called um, El Circo de del Kiko. And also uh, El Chilindrina's father, Don Ramon, he had a, a, a little circus for a little while. But see, those characters didn't belong to them, according to the guy... Chesperito, the guy who invented the show, Chesperito. Okay. But it's like um, you're spinning off George, it's like Seinfeld, and then George Costanza goes on his own as George Costanza. Right. He starts doing like personal shows as, jo- as J- yeah, but George Costanza. Yeah, but the character belongs to Jerry, you know? Right. Yeah, she doesn't want. Did, so he didn't want him to do that then? He didn't, he didn't want him to go make money off the character that he created. That's kind of. Hey, that's kind of not cool, though. Don't, do, you, do you think? Or do you think because he created it, if anything, give him a, a piece. But I don't know, man. I feel I, I hope that I'm this giving when I have a chance yeah. to be. But I'd be like, yeah, go do your character. That's rad. If I wrote a character for you, I go fucking pimp it out on a stage somewhere as a comic. Go for it. Yeah, man. So in, in Rome, there would be like a kid like um, slave. Okay, of course, it was there were mostly slaves or people. That they caught during wars, barbarians, and mm-hmm. they were the ones that were doing other entertainment, like fighting a lion, reenacting old fights, you know, old battles, like the like in the movie Gladiator, which is reenacting a whole thing, bro. So that I, I okay, so I read somewhere that it was um, it was like a general that was like fucking with horses, and people liked watching him like do horse tricks and shit. Yes, and then he. Who? Cherry racing. Cherry racing. Yeah, and then that's why they used the uh, military-looking style in the circus, because that, like, that was what it started with. And then he started adding acts once he realized people were watching it. That's pretty. That's that's a really interesting thing, man. Because I mean, if you look at time between between the time that the radio came into play. And to now is not as big as the time that the circus started yeah, just, and the circus kind of ended. Just imagine a world where there's no internet, no televisions, no radio, and only the major big cities ha- have a newspaper. And the newspaper that you get in that town is probably five days old that came over or, to your city. Right. Well, imagine this as well, bro. This one's the one so that... you got to believe whatever you hear. Right. Well, imagine this. Imagine you don't even know what a lion looks like except for a drawing maybe in a book that you saw. And and some of these animals, you've never... like even They don't even have drawings of like giraffes and shit. And all of a sudden, this thing pulls into town with these like decorative wagons. And you hear the elephant. And you hear the elephant and you see the lions <laughs> and you see these beasts, dude, that... Yeah. Hey, Shit, but, imagine hearing that, bro. You never heard that before. Right. Can you show a picture also of, like, just put circus train car? These things, bro. P.T. Oh. Barnum started driving his own trains. Oh, my God. Did you Have you seen pictures of these things? Oh, my God. They, they they're were, they're they was, beautiful. It was cover, they, they would get off every, um what, every 12 hours or every, every yeah, to, to, to let everybody out and stretch right. the animals. Yeah, they would take them all out, and then they would walk them around, and then bring them in, you know. Uh, yeah, look, look at look at some of these, man. Um, like, if you can find color ones, they're pretty. Yeah, like that one on the top left corner. Look at that, man. That's amazing, Massive. dude. 
That's amazing. Like the the, the and and these things would be rolling by. Could you imagine? You're like, you've never even seen TV. There's no TV. Radio kind of describes shit. Maybe you've seen something in a book, but even then, books were kind of scarce. People were illiterate as fuck. And then this big, colorful thing with these giant beasts go rolling by. Beasts. Like, it's insane, man. I just, like, I, I really I, I really want to imagine what it was like. I mean, because there's no and, um, way we could even know. And then besides um, the circus, even before there was actually, like, a big circus, even there was the Ringling Brothers before that, even before them, because they started in Rome, and then later on, when um, the Roman Empire fell apart, um, there was actually real circuses in England. Okay. And, and the British started moving around. Okay. That's when it started traveling? Yeah, it started traveling, and then later on, it hit America. And um, and this is, it hit America, because some of the circuses, go out, they go all the way back, they performed in front of um, President George Washington. Right. And, um, yes. So that's interesting. So um, I wonder what the transition was from like how, like when they started coming to America. Like when was the very did it was like before the, because uh, man, that's the one thing that I love about this this podcast right now, is that you can like now line up times, man. Like yeah, like I didn't, I never realized that Napoleon existed around the same time that George Washington existed, and that the American Revolution. <laughs> Was like tipped off the French Revolution, yeah, and then you were talking about like Chinese food, and then that kind of coincides with what Napoleon was doing with the British and with the American Revolution, and then now here we are with the circus, and it's like yeah, man, the circus. Speaking of the circus, um, P. T. Barnum, who who, who, who started off as a, a guy that was he owned a, a museum, okay. And right, um, yeah. he started off at the museum. He was actually, he started a circus in later in life when he was retiring, bro, in his sixties. So, but his his whole life, his he whole was, life before that, he wasn't was the, a circus no, guy. No, it was okay. a museum, bro. Really, he had a museum with oddities, and um, like, and uh, he was the king of the. He goes, I'm the king of the humbugs, because a humbug. Oh, uh, uh, that's the, right. Because a humbug is like a hype. Yeah, it's like a bad guy or something. All hype and no action. It's like know? a guy who hustles people or something, right? So um, he 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 um he was a, a the guy that owned a museum, bro, and uh, people, he would charge people would pay twenty five cents to go see what the hell he had in that room, right? And he bought a an um, an illegal uh, he bought a slave, bro, illegally in the north. Okay, yeah, I've heard during this. the time he bought it for a thousand dollars. And he and he took her around. The, he toured with her. You know, like um, this is before the circus. He just toured with her, right? And said that she was um, George Washington's wet nurse, and she was one hundred sixty five. One hundred sixty five years old. I've heard this one. And even like, they put <coughs> her teeth out to make her look even older. What was her name? Yeah, I okay. So I heard about this. And and then uh, I also heard that he would huh? like Joyce Head. Joyce Head. Joyce Heath. Yeah, Heath, Heath, yeah. Heath. Joyce Heath. Look her up, people. Joyce Heath. But he toured with her, and uh, the wet, the nurse, and yeah. then um, when um, when they found out that it was a lie, yeah, he said that yeah, I don't want to tell and scare everybody, but she was actually a robot. Right. Yeah, people believe that too. Well, I think he would. He would like. Um, he would ha hire people to write articles that it was fake and it was a robot, and he would and 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 then he would go. He would counter with it, like pretending yeah. he didn't hire them, and go, "Well, come and find out then. Come and see if she's a robot or if she's real." And he's like, "Dude, like I, I, this guy's like the, this guy's like the father of of advertising." At this point, yeah, because he knew how to go viral in a in a world without social media. Yeah, like he he really knew how to make these audacious. And this is at a time when like you could make fake claims and you couldn't get sued for it or in trouble for it. Yeah, he says she was 161 years old. Okay, she took care of George Washington when he was a kid. <laughs> 
She was 161 years she old. She was the she slave of, of his dad. And she took care of Joe Washington. She was a kid. And then he bought, on top of this, he bought her. Yes. So when, when she died, he charged people 50 cents. Yeah. To op- to go witness her, open her, o- do the autopsy. Uh, this is crazy, bro. So I, yeah. He, he, they opened up her body and the people would pay 50 cents to see the body. Right. And later on, he toured with the bones. Right. Right. Okay. And, and when she died. Yeah. He didn't even say um, goodbye, Joy Heath. Right. He was just sad to see a very, a very good oddity. Did you see that movie about him? To lose a comedy. Bro, I started watching the... I started watching the first two minutes. Yeah. And I talked to Philip. He said he watched the first two minutes. Okay. As soon as I full open his mouth to start singing, we both turned it off. <laughs> so I didn't watch it. I can't it. watch no motherfucking yeah. musical with fucking Wolverine, bro. I didn't watch it, but I heard that it makes him seem like he's a really good dude, that he was just trying to help out people who were, like, fucked up, and he was, like, a real humanitarian. And, like, um, even the book that I think we both read, was made tried to make it seem like he was like this really good dude who just had a few faults. But he wrote like, his own biography. It was like, bro, you bought a, you illegally bought a human being, trucked her around the fucking country, and then fucking spl- sliced her open for the benefit of like making more money. Bro, he brought some Salvadorian people <laughs> from El Salvador back no, in the day. No, he bought. He bought them, he yeah. Bought, yeah. And uh, he he telling everybody he, he, they were Aztecs, like they were in a no. Game. Also, man, the first Filipinos to show up to America, the first ones ever, were at the World's Fair. They were in a cage. Yeah, bro. I've heard about this. Or yeah, I heard about black kids too, or African kids, or something. Yeah, man, but this but I didn't know about what? the Filipinos. This is the Salvadorian ones. They were Mexican Aztecs. They were Mexican Aztecs. They're Salvadorians, bro. Yeah. Bro, this guy was a hustler, dude. Jesus Christ. He had another guy, bro, that was looking what like he humbug. looked like a weirdo, a, a, a black dude. He would just call him, What's this? What is this? I got the video here. Play it, Philip. Oh, yeah, I know the what's what? this. That's crazy. P.T. Barnum and Here we go. Let's go. New York, 1924. Carl Oliver, bro. What the? Lion faced boy. Hey, Jax, the sword swallower is crazy. That blows my mind. Ton Ton. Fluffy. Tom Ton. <laughs> Living shop window bust. What is that? The Hannah Triplets, bro. Crazy dog. And then I seen the what's this? It's got like a weird head and like a fucking forward face, and li- it almost looks Neanderthalic. Then um, he almost sorry. Holy then he fuck. bought that that little person, bro. Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb. But I read another article that he didn't actually buy. Well, I read two of one. He bought. He bought him. Okay. The second one was he bought him off a relative, and um, Tom Tom was actually a relative of him. So this is the one that I heard. What's the real one? It's that okay. So he did buy. It's both. It's a relative of a relative. It's like a second cousin that was like, "Hey, my kid's like two feet and never growing again. Do you want to buy him?" <laughs> it, you know, and like, so it wasn't like chip boy. So in a. <laughs> Dude, dude, this is Hezbollah. This kid like actually somebody looks moved like to five different dude. Like, if you look comedy. up Hezbollah, I think it's the same disease. Say it again. That's, that's, a, that's a little dude from TikTok. It's all mad. Yeah, outside. that's Hezbollah. Hezbollah, yeah. Yeah, his name's Hezbollah. Like Hezbollah live. How tall was he? Three feet, right? He was two and a half feet, I think. So yes, the story goes that he would he he took him around, bro. Yeah, and like they were like a, a lieutenant or something. He was, but he was uh, a grown man when he bought him, right? Not a kid, right? No, he bought him as a four year old. Ooh, he bought him and then he raised but, him, taught him how to dance, taught him how to sing. His character was an old an old an older gentleman, yeah. not a kid. No, huh? no, when he was six, he was smoking yes. a cigar. Yes, he was. He was drinking and too. He was drinking with the queen dog, like. Like that was it. He would was dress Marie like Antoinette. he would dress like uh, yeah, yeah. And he would dress like Napoleon and strut around. I will say this: this is one of the better stories, and this is where they try to make and and it does. In a way, I feel Look like at him, bro, bro, like P. T. Barnum. Little, I saw a video with a little with a lady holding up a little suit. Right, 
Oh, yeah, dude. So P.T. Barnum actually really helped this guy out. And then this is the part where you go, like, and this is where I got confused reading about all this stuff. Or not confused, but it confused in my feelings. But, oh, um, man. Because it was like Napoleon. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Because this guy, this kid went on to be a, one of the richest people in America. He a lot of hoes. He pulled um, P.T. Barnum out of debt later at some point and helped save him. You know, and so he obviously liked him. Bro, when Tom Tom got married, he yeah. he charged people for the wedding, bro. He did, and bro. everybody. And it was I don't know if it was televised because there's no TVs, but it was it was, it was all over the paper. It was all over the papers, and it helped people forget about the Civil War. Right? Yeah, that's the thing. I think did P. T. Barnum also was he the one that had the um, Buffalo Bill show? No, actually. Um, there was there, there was these brothers called the they were called the Sal brothers looking Sal and Fint or Font Sal Lot brothers. Um, they bought the the they bought the Wild Bill show when 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 Wild Bill was around. The Wild Bill had a Wild Western show that was competing with P.T. Barnum. Right, and that was because if you ever watched uh, the Last Samurai with uh, w with Tom Cruise. Um, which uh, parts of it are actually, um, uh, nonfiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, there's that one of them is the scene, um, where he's doing Buffalo Bill's show. Um, and Buffalo Bill would hire sol real soldiers with repeated rifles because he was selling Winchester repeating rifles at him. And, and then they would talk about the, in killing the Indians and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like it was part of the Buffalo Bill show. And, uh, what, what's the name? Uh, I think, um, a famous Native American became part of the Wild, Wild Bill show. Just, he would just sit there and get paid, bro. Oh, yeah. Geronimo. Was it Geronimo? Yeah. Man. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, right. Like nobody would have given that guy a, a job anywhere, bro. And also, that pinhead person that was a part of his show. Yeah, uh, that guy had microcephaly, and that's real. That was the other thing. That was kind of like was was the issue, I guess. Was that like these freak shows had all, all these? You know, remember that movie we watched and we always laugh at it. Um, something Alley. Yeah, it's called. Uh, uh, it's called um, Midnight uh, Alley. Borderline Alley. Something the Canary like, Alley. Something, bro. With um with uh Alley Bradley Cooper. Dreams. It's with Bradley Cooper. Oh, um and I was born for that. Yes, bro. But that's but I'm pretty sure that's how they did it in PT Barnum days too, bro. Nightmare Alley. Okay, so, Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley. So Explain I, the geek to everybody. So, so I looked this up and this is a true story actually. The rest is a geek. This is taken from this so Nightmare Alley is a nineteen forty five classic, apparently. And um and it was remade and that's the one we saw which is hilarious. It's Explain to them though. Okay, first of all, the, the original and where it comes from. So this is a true story. This is true, and then this is in the movie. They they get a guy that um a drunk. He's a drunk or he's a drug addict or he's just kind of a sucker. Like, hey man, come and help us clean up around the thing and ride with us on the trail as we're as we're traveling. And they go, well, you don't really. Have... And then once they get him out there and they pay him a little money, and he's like, can I get a little more money? He's like, well, you don't have a lot of skills, so there's maybe something else you could do for but us. They start getting him drunk. They start getting him alcohol and mix it with opium. Right, and that's how they would do it. And that's actually how they would do it. They would like give him alcohol, and, and it would be mixed with the... opium, and yeah, then eventually yeah. he'd just be addicted to the opium. And they go, well, okay, man, you got to do more than clean up for this kind of money then, and you owe me a lot of money now for the drinking and the opium. So what are you going to do? We need we need a geek because we have this act, and it's this guy who pretends he's half man, half monster, and he grows out all his hair, and he's all fucked up and grotesque. He eats live chickens. And he eats live chickens and live snakes too. Like he's also – like they had a guy that was like a, a, a black geek that would like – bite snakes in half and um and he's in a pit and he's like fucked up and he and they drop the chicken in there and the guy and he pretends to be a monster and he's like and you know and at the time man you know bums weren't everywhere like they are here 
you know, or like and, it, it is fucked up thing to say, man. It, but it is a fucked up thing to right say. Right now, man, it's a messed up statement. But like, if people next people ask you, man, how come there's so home home so many homeless? Cause bro, we got no more circuses, bro. Cause you have no more circuses. <laughs> that might be the uh, well. The we thing have no was, more circuses, and we have no more uh, same a uh, sane asylums. Right. Well, that's that's, that's actually the real problem. reason. We have nowhere. Remember in that movie with Bat with a Joker. Where the Joker was going every week to get medicine, mm -hmm. and there were some people that were locked up mm -hmm. in an asylum. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have those in a, in some place no more. Nobody wants to pay money for that, so this is the problem we have. Well, now. Reagan defunded them. Reagan yeah. defunded them, and once he defunded them, because that was a problem that happened in San Jose, is because we had one of the largest federal asylums, Agnews, and the campus is still there. It's kind of spooky, especially I was a kid. I used to go not as a teenager I used to go there when it was abandoned. Um, but when he defunded it, it flooded uh, San Jose with all these homeless crazy people. And there was like a shootout with cops and these cops shot each other. It was crazy. But but so back then, you, you would be a geek back then. It wasn't a common thing to see like a homeless person or a person that was all fucked up. So to see a guy with dreadlock beards and he's like smells, he stinks like. You know, he hasn't bathed and he smells like piss and he sh they, he shits himself and he's basically a drug addict. Like to see, like put it this way, what you see uh, at, at the tenderloins, yeah. people were paying to see that. Yes. In in droves. Droves. In droves. And they and back go, then, if you were looking that bummy in the streets, the cop would just beat your ass. Huh? Yeah, bro, they, they kick you out of town. They kick you out of town. I huh? mean, that's what fucking Rambo's about, you know? And that guy was just a soldier. You know, so like, <laughs> so I mean, you know, that's how it was all the way up to like the sixties, hey, bro. That'd be funny. That guy, they, they remake the movie, they remake Rambo again, and then when that guy being a dick, fuck you, fucking stolen valor. Rambo's a geek. He's a stolen valor. He's a guy. stolen valor. <laughs> but that's how it is, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how it was for a very long time, even when we were alive as kids, bro, because we lived in big cities. Homeless was a thing for us. But if you just I remember going into Morgan Hill one night as a teenager out of San Jose and, they and the you. cops pulled us over and told us that we needed to leave town like they kicked us out of town. So you could imagine. And I remember being a kid uh, living in Morgan Hill and there not being almost any homeless people. So, you know, this is not new. And then back then, so to see someone like that, they would pay money. Yeah. You know, and, and again, man, um, I, I read this, that the downfall of the freak show was literally like science, like um, like amniocentesis and stuff like that, because we were able to tell what was going to happen to children. And then we learned, okay, no smoking, no drinking, you know, no, like... What you eat could affect the children, like how you raise them. Liberals. And so, yeah, basically liberals killed the circus. <laughs> liberals have slowly, and, and I'm a liberal myself, have killed the circus. This is what I read. I mean, like the animals was a big deal, and now you can't, there's almost no circuses that have animals in it. No, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, In 2017 was the last animal show for um, Ringling Brothers. And oh wow! Yeah, yeah 2017, okay. they shut it all down. They shut down the whole circus, but they come back. They're gonna come back. I'm supposed to come back next, in 2022, with a whole new circus with no animals. Well, and I think that's why the genius of Cirque du Soleil had cut, like that's why I've never been to one of those, but I bought tickets for my mom. They're amazing. They're pretty. I mean, they partnered together now. That's what they're gonna do. Is that what's happening? Ringling and Cirque du Soleil are partnering together. I knew that was it's coming. It's over then. After I started reading about all this and when I started to dive into this, I thought, ah, uh, because that's one of the things is I started to watch this History of the Circus videos and they were really like a little too friendly with the circus. And I looked it up and it was like a Cirque du Soleil run thing. And I was like, oh, this is the future of the circus because it's all acts. Now, the Vegas shows, I'll say this. I've gone to the Vegas shows. I've seen Kai and Ovo. Ovo? No, sorry. I saw Kai and I saw the Beatles one. Those were fucking amazing. Imagine. But I saw Ovo in San Jose and I had to walk out because here's the thing. Like, I don't know. For some reason in Vegas, it didn't affect me or it didn't happen as much. The applause came after a certain number of acts. When I saw the one in San Jose, 
everybody applauded every time they did so every time these motherfuckers did a headstand they would fucking applaud and i was like can we fucking chill for a minute can we just can we just calm down oh and the bad there was a bad breath guy next to me so i looked over at my because my girl's mom got us the tickets they're expensive too i was all let's get the fuck out of here and go fucking do some <laughs> drugs dude like, it's fucking lame um yeah I'm, when i was a kid i was a circle with my father in mexico Okay. I, I wish I would have found a photo. of How us, was that? I was a little kid, dog. I mean, my father. I was sitting in my between my father's lap, right, and my brother sitting in my uncle's um, leg, and we're we're both. There's one of my brother, <sighs> but I'm sitting with my dad, bro. And I'm like little, bro. I'm like four or okay. something, or three. But uh, that was like the Mexican circus. And, That's what and, I'm wondering. It had, a, like, it had a ring is that? top. It was in black. The photo was black and white. So man, <laughs> you know. My dad was the one out loud because to take a photo at the zoo. No, I'm sorry. At the circus. To take a photo at the circus right. and have the them have the photo ready right there, I guess. Right. Because um and, and then they put the photo, bro, inside a nice little cardboard that had circus clowns on it. Uh Did you know that the first pink lemonade was invented by a clown? No way, really. Yeah, it was the clowns. The clowns from a circus, they were mad that they were getting paid very low. So one of them started selling lemonade at the, at the circus. Ah, uh, that may, that may, the name of the, because there's a book called Pink Lemonade about yeah. the Barnum Bailey circus. And he started selling that makes sense, lemonade. Man. But one day they ran out of water. So that fool looking, scrambling, looking for water. And he went to where like the, the dancers were. And she was dyeing her, her her outfit red. Okay. And the, there was like red dye water. Right. So he used that water to make the pink lemonade. Oh, that's gross, but okay. Show the clip, Philip. Play it. Gentlemen, the history of pink lemonade. Started by a disgruntled clown. I love this. There's a couple of versions to this story, and here's one of them. So it was 1857 when a disgruntled clown by the name of Peter Conklin got fed up because they weren't paying the clowns good wages. So he decided he was going to do something new. He was going to make lemonade and sell it at the circus. Customers loved it. They loved it so much. He ran out of water to make the lemonade. And they were parched. They wanted more lemonade. So he, went and he ran into one of the changing tents where... Where the bareback horseback rider was washing her red Oh no! She was washing its dirty laundry water. They just love the fact that it was pink lemonade, and the pink lemonade was born. Not so hygienic lemonade, but. Tell you how fucking tamarindo was made, eh? Play stop. Yeah, you guys are always getting mad at Indian people cooking, eh? Yeah, dude. I that we yeah 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 top ten circus foods. Corn dogs, pink popcorn, which was invented at circuses. Yes, it was, bro. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. Um, I want to say corn dogs, pink popcorn, probably hot dogs. Peanuts, number one, Peanuts, probably, yeah. yeah. Um, cotton candy. Cotton candy. It was called spun candy back then. Um, ice cream, probably hamburgers. Sodas, ice cream. I don't think hamburgers. All these foods were not considered... Like high society food back in the day, by the way. No, like you, like, you, yeah. like somebody, somebody. Well, was, the circus wasn't a high society. Yeah, thing bro. Back in the and day. also hamburger. We should, next time we'll do a history. Hamburger was not something like the the people with fucking high society ate, bro. Right. And hot dog was like because you didn't trust back then. You couldn't trust the meat that they were serving you. Well, it was also because those foods were made for. Um, well, I got too close to the mic. Um, those foods were like hot dogs. They were made for workers because they needed to have some like sandwiches, hamburgers, hot dogs. Those were handheld foods that you could take. It was like, do I, I believe some of it was dock workers who needed to just grab food and be on the run with it. Mm -hmm. Or dry, I think it was drivers, actually. Did you know what? That um, P.T. Barnum, he had a hierarchy for the employees. Okay. So all the performers, like the main ones, like the the trapeze, number one. You know, people on the trapeze. Right. People that um line tamers, like the big shots at, at the main show. Those guys were at the top of the. They were at the top, hierarchy. bro. They had the best train. They had their own train. Okay. They got they 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 they, they were they got to eat before everybody. They had their own table, and then came like the managers, the people that are in charge of everybody, right? Then yeah, like the rustlers. Yeah, and stuff. then yeah. came the clowns, bro. Oh, the clowns. Then were after that, it. after the all the performers, yeah, were the workers, people that put up the tents, and they were not allowed to talk to performers. 
Not at all. Like and you put putting up a tent. Not, you're not allowed to and talk. And they probably set, slept like 10 to a fucking car. Oh, yeah. There's three to a car. Three to, three. Three to a bed. Three to a bed? Yeah. And then the animals, the bro, forget about here. it, bro. Like water? Well, right. Water for them? Nah. Well, did you know that the... Okay, I mean, obviously... Animal will die, bro, on the way there. Right. Well, this is the thing is that... Like the first... Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. The first... Like, I don't know if it was P.T. Barnum... He went out to go grab a baby elephant from um, from Africa. Yeah, and pay people to get it. Right, but elephants, um, they I don't know they're mammals, but they had to. They're very protective of their family. They have very pride. Yes, you know? I've heard, yes. So they killed a bunch of old elephants just to get that little baby elephant back to America. And it, did it die? On the no, way? it lived. It lived. But ever, all the, but they killed a lot of they elephants. They killed hell. Uh, they elephants kill, just to get that baby elephant. Yeah, they would kill all the pack animals. Like, they would kill the entire pack just to get the babies. Yeah. And then um, lions, bro, would die. A of, you thought the lion, the, the fucking Tiger King was bad? Yeah. These, tr- these animals were in trains, bro. They didn't know where the hell they are going. Right. So, like some of those circuses had seals, bro, out well, of water. So there's Jumbo. Is the name Jumbo? So here, do you, Jumbo. Do you want to tell the story of Jumbo? Go ahead. You know it. So, yeah, I love do, this do it, story. Bro. Do okay, it. so first of all, he was like, this elephant's name is Jumbo. It's a male. It's very hard to get an, a male elephant. And so um, it was- He was a, huge, huh? It was huge. And it was a prized possession- it was a prized possession of the London um, royalty. And um, here's the other thing. You might be thinking, oh, this thing's called Jumbo because it's a huge elephant. No. no. This was Jumbo. The and first every- Jumbo. And everything Jumbo now, Jumbo sunflower seeds. Jumbo fries. Jumbo fries. It's based off, jumbo of, titties. off of Jumbo titties. It's based off of this Jumbo. Fucking Jumbo. Fucking Jumbo. So he bought this thing off of Lo- out of London and like London flipped, bro. People of London were like upset. People, they were like writing letters to the queen. There was like uh, famous sing- songwriters were making songs to keep Jumbo in London. And this fool was like, I don't give a fuck. He takes Jumbo. He takes him on the road for a while. Jumbo's killing it though, bro. Jumbo is selling out. I mean, fuck whatever comedy tours we're doing, dude. Jumbo was- You were making killing it, right? 10,000 people a show. Is where people are coming to see Jumbo. 25 cents to get in. How much is that, Philip? Oh, my God, dude. I'm pretty sure front row take away way more. Yeah, dude. That's um, So Jumbo uh, is is this prize possession for a little bit. I think like a couple years. $5, $5 today. Huh? $5 today is 25 cents. So, so five 50, times 10,000. 50,000 a night. What is $5 times 10,000? That doesn't, yeah. But still, that's still a lot of money for back then, huh? Right. So, like, um, yeah, at that time, it's probably like, dude, these, because, like, well, he made his money back tenfold on the, on the elephant. He, like, he hired this lady that was like a famous singer, and he and he promised her a certain amount of money, and then he paid her, and then when she realized how much she was make, making him, she asked for more. He gladly paid her that and made his money ten. This guy knew how to make money yeah. all the t- this guy was like n- pt barnum was like the richest like the what's the guy that does amazon bezos. he's like the jeff, jeff bezos. bezos of this time and, hey, the, the circus life though man right for but pt barnum was great because he was the owner and making lots of money right but it was a hard life for everybody all the way down to the bottom huh? all the way down the thing with the elephant take just, sellers bro let me just finish with the elephant so, so this elephant's crossing a train track. This and what train happened? comes and fucking just kills this thing. Just smacks into it. it kills the, him instantly? Kills it instantly, dude. There's Why? pictures of the dead elephant. People are sad? They didn't know the train was coming. And um, people were sad, but this is what P.T. Barnum does. He goes and he has it stuffed. And actually, the guy who stuffed it is the guy who invented taxidermy. He puts the stuffed elephant on, on display and the bones. And he comes up with a story, bro, where he's like, there was a baby elephant that was about to cross the train tracks, and Jumbo jumped in the way to push the baby elephant out of the way. 
And then he got the baby elephants in the warehouse. Huh? And then he probably did that. But I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's the elephant, the dead elephant. Did you ever see a movie called Sante Sangre? Nah. Bro, that's a good circus movie, dude. What's it called? It's called Sante Sangre. And it's, I don't know if it's a Mexican. I thought it was Mexican, but I could be wrong. And maybe I was just a racist kid like that. But I was like 10 when, when it came out. And my dad rented it, not knowing that it was like a real dark, fucked up movie. And it was about a, a circus. And there's like a scene where they eat the elephant, like the elephant dies and the little kid. Fuck. Dude, this movie, bro, go watch this movie tonight. Fuck. Dog. This dog. movie is creepy. Show a clip real fast. And I watched it as a kid. Uh, like, I went back and rented it. It was one of the I only think things. This is the part of the movie that fucked up your, your life. Bro. Might have, bro, because one of the only things I could do as a kid when I was like 11 was walk down the store and get. Santa Sangre. Get VHS tapes. I remember my dad coming home after the third time and being like, I don't think this is good for you to watch. But I had already seen it like so many times, dude. Hey, how fucked up is that elephant hook they used to fuck with those elephants? Dude, holy like, shit. Who, they, they, that's, that was invented just to fuck up elephants and to fucking close the blinds in the 1950s right. house. Right, that's crazy. Yeah, Show the elephant is, hook. They made those illegal. Dude, that is, oh, yeah, that hook is nuts, dude. You saw that as a kid? I watched it all the time as a kid. I was obsessed with it. And you're right, because I kind of look back. I was talking to my girlfriend a, a while back, and it's shaped by, like, weirdness. It's what made me a weird, because, like, it was really a dark. A it's about a kid who. It's a trailer. Yeah. Claudio Argento. This is like double legs, I feel them small. Come on! Don't be afraid! Come on! What a niche. You like you're a new member of the motorcycle <laughs> club. <laughs> That's his mom. That's the kid's mom. And the kid's oh, like in love with this girl. Face. And then that's the, like, not, that's not necessarily the dad, you get a but tattoo? he's giving him a tattoo. Fucking kid, eh? And then, like, it's about this kid growing up in this circus, basically. <laughs> and it's nuts, bro. It's bizarre. There's a, a scene where the elephant dies, and they throw it in this, uh, they, like, have a funeral for it first, and then they throw it in this ravine. It's a hardcore trailer. And then all these people come out of the ravine and tar start tearing the elephant to pieces and eating it. It... Yeah, bro. This is some real fucking gay cowboys eating pudding shit, dude. For sure. But it's it's a dark, fucked up movie. Like, eight-year-old, nine-year-old kids shouldn't be watching this shit. That's for sure. Look at that. I guess that's what you like tattooed women, bro. Probably, dude. Nah, you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, European movies don't care, huh? I'm gonna go home and watch this tonight, actually. Or I'll kill you. That's right. She gets banned from the circus because she's cheating. All right. Okay. Yeah, dude. Good stuff right there, bro. Good stuff. Santa Sang never Santa heard of Sangre, it, bro. dude. Shaped my childhood, dude. No, I saw a movie about the circus when I was a kid with um, <coughs> Dean, I don't know if it was Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. And Jerry Lewis plays the clown. And um, what's his name? I don't know what, what Dean Martin plays. Then I saw another movie where Tony Curtis, he's in a trapeze. During Circus? Yeah, mm, that's it. Okay. I saw that one, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, no, I, I, um, the first Circus movie was that one for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucked up movie bro. this explains a lot right hell yeah <laughs> yeah dude uh so that's so that's uh my experience anyway but uh that's what oh yeah we were talking about the jumbo before and um it's so sad how the like <clears throat> Yeah, that scene was crazy, bro. Because they dump it into this ravine. And then, like, all all these people covered in dirt come out of this, like, ravine. Out of the, like, caves. 
and they like pull the box apart because it's in this huge coffin. And then, like, you just see the trunk come out, and it's all, like, dripping with blood, and they start eating it, and, like, it it was crazy, man. But that's what made me think of that movie was the Jumbo and the death of Jumbo. But, like, again, P.T. Barnum exploited the fuck out of that thing, dude. Like, he ran the Jumbo thing into the ground as much as he could. You remember the one when he, when the, when he had the museum, and he was telling everybody that um, um, he saw he had the mermaid? Yes, and he, but he started selling. He started selling. He started selling hype with papers all over. Right. He would send people uh, to forward like forward it, like other towns, and he would he, he would um, you know like start like creating like talk and stuff. So when they showed up, people were like, "We got to see this shit." You know, one of the things that I learned was the reason why animals are a big part of the circus is because the religious movement was really big in um america at this time i mean they, this is the same movement and we again this overlaps a little bit when we talked about christmas remember when we talked about how christmas was outlawed in america yeah. for a while this is the same movement that tried to outlaw christmas and they're, and, they're trying to outlaw the circus now and they're trying to outlaw the circus so what he did and he created a menagerie and and that's because there's a name. If you can look up the original name for it, um, I actually have it written down. If you can't, he didn't. He never called it the circus, though. He called it the greatest show on earth. It was like kind of a faux pas to call it a circus, because the circus was kind of like a hood name for it, you know? Yes. So it was like a circus, but we're getting, getting a bad name because before P.T. Barnum and the Ringling Brothers, these circuses well, not only would they have um, oddities and freaks. They would also show up with right. professional pickpocketers. Yeah, and people like they would tell the worker they don't 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 um don't associate with the audience, but um also the circus people were bringing in something that these towns have never seen, and that's f actually freedom. Right, like these people had tattoos. These people smoked cigars. No, and they had places. They they, they yeah. fucking drank. It's like. Walk, imagine, man, you're in a small little town, and you never saw a guy like b looking like Butch, bu big ass motherfucker, and he's making out with a black woman. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they and they were all because you wouldn't. He, well, he had a half man, half woman, which was a woman with um, breast cancer, like a chopped off. He's breast. fucked up, huh? Yeah. The thing was is that so I'm the, the reason jars, bro, the baby gets in jars. So he used the animals to lure in Christian people. That's why animals, because it was a buffer. It was like, oh, here's a fan. That's why, like, the circus used to be for adults. It used to be a dark thing that adults went to, to, like, gawk and look at shit. And then fast forward to now where the circus is just for kids. That has a lot to do with religion, and the animals have a lot to do with that. But this guy, yeah, he would, like, do shit like that all the time, bro. Like, he kind of exploited people, but at the same time, there is a good point to that. He gave these people work, bro. He gave, and these people made a lot of money, uh, according to all accounts that I've read. That One of the people that he got later on, like, I, I, I already knew about her. I don't know her name. Her name is Litla, Litla something. Look it up, Philip. She's a star of, they call her the queen of the air. And she was the highest oh, paid trapeze. Oh, uh, Lila, Lila, Lila. Um, you read about her. I did read about her. You know what her, her story, bro? Um, Yeah, it's kind of sad. Her mother, bro. Her mother was, was from a small town and her dad was part of a, a small traveling um, circus. Like, not a real circus, but back then when they were having little side shows and they were acrobatic, bro. Her right there. If you want to read a fucking great book. Lila Lytle. Yeah, Lila Lytle. Lila right Lytle. Lila Lytle is the daughter of, of her mother was taken at 13 years old, bro, or 14. Um, imagine, bro, this guy comes in and, and he goes like this. Hey, I heard you guys don't have your, your act anymore. No, we're too old. My dad's had a bad back. Right. How about I buy your daughter off you for the summer? And so the guy gave her a bunch of money for Lilac's mom. Oh, really? And he took her, bro, on the road, and he raped her, bro, and she came back pregnant. No. So, so he, he and, and that was the little girl you saw right now, Queen right. of the Air. The, that's her, bro. She became the little daughter, but he trained the mom, bro, to do acrobats, bro. To do every, bro, everything, bro. 
And in the, it's a sad book, bro. In the beginning of the book, it shows, like, it's saying this, bro. I was in a carriage with two other little kids. She was like 14 years old, bro, and she was in the carriage with a seven year with a five year old and a and a, a five year old boy and a five year old girl, bro. And they were given to that guy too. Was that the guy who taught her how to do yeah. Alfred Cadona is his name? Yeah, Alfred then. Cadona. He raped her. He raped her and, and then, then he married her, right? And then he raped Which... her and then later on he, he dropped her off back to her parents and then she came back. Okay. He got her pregnant again, dog. No. She ended up it wasn't until later on till the mom got really big and then she left. But her daughter, she became the biggest trapeze ever, like Madonna. Right, yes, yes. Like the mom was big too, but the daughter was the just daughter big. was bigger. She was like she was like modern day uh, Lady Gaga, bro. So she that so there's kind of an even more tragic, not even more, but as tragic a story as it gets because after she dies, she falls. She falls from like. Uh, one night, can you imagine, bro, watching someone Who, die? Th which one, the, the mom or the daughter? I think it's the daughter. Uh, whoever was married Who to... The daughter. Lila Litzel, right? Yes. Okay, so she marries a guy named Alfred Cadona. Yeah. Yes, that, he, Italian dude. Yeah. And, and he, was, he was from us. He was not... He didn't rape her. He, the guy... Later, the mom the, got raped. The okay. mom got raped. Okay. She never met her dad. Right. Her dad, her dad trained her to, to Ruben. but he was out of the picture right. already. He was just a bad man. So when this girl dies... The daughter, when she dies, Alfred Cadona marries another chick named Vera, um, and and uh, and he murders her, and then Shut murders up. himself like right after, and he marries <clears throat> her like a year after she dies, you know. And the story is he couldn't deal with it, and he just flips out and he kills his his new wife and he kills himself, but she plummeted right in front of people, like it's, it's the man. It, it is like uh, fucked up because. Um, so many, like so many, so, so many, like before, no, because um, Lila's mother, her parents were part of an act, right? That that because the dad was a strong man, right? The dad was a strong man, and then the mom was more like acrobatic, and then he would throw her, and then she would flip, and then when, but it's crazy that the guy saw an opportunity, bro, and pretty much groomed her, and raped her, bro, got her pregnant, and. I mean, and but then what just, could you do at when, that time? When, when you read, when you when you fucking read about how scared she is, because they just put her, he just threw her in the in the back of a carriage, bro. With those, and there was two little kids in there. That's crazy, bro. Bro, did you see? There's a fucked up movie called um, oh uh, man, it's called the Ballad of Something Something. It made it made by the Coen Brothers. The ballad, uh, it's on Netflix. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's like three different stories or something. Did you like see that? the one about the one man show? Ballad yeah. of Buster Scrubs. Yeah. And the only one I saw was the white, the cowboy that with the like that yeah. shot behind him. That guy. Well, there's another one, bro, with fucking that guy from Give Me Back My Daughter. I'll find you. Oh, uh, Liam Neeson. Yeah, Liam Neeson, bro. Liam Neeson plays a fucking um, a guy. He has a stagecoach. And he's traveling with a kid with no arms and no legs, bro. And then Sorry. he he has the guy dressed up, bro, in a little suit. <laughs> yeah. And he puts him laying down with no arms. There he is right there, dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I did yeah. see this and one. And then that kid is just quoting, like, um, he's just quoting Abraham Lincoln. Yes, that's He's doing right. Shakespeare. I met a salesman in the area of town. Four scorn years, and then people he's are just give, there for people to look at. Yeah, and then but he's talking, bro, like doing right. speeches of Lincoln that they never heard of in Lincoln's speech. Right. And now a speech from Lincoln, they never heard a Lincoln speech. Right. But now they're hearing it from a guy, fucking a meatball kid, you know. Right. Yeah, from art. But damn, Brad, and this is how fucked up the circus was, and sideshows. Sideshows were fucked up. He goes into a town, and he sees a guy making a shitload of money with a chicken. And the chicken was guessing everybody's number. It's an old trick. You know, some of the seeds are behind the number, so the chicken already knows. Right. So um, he goes, bah, bah, bah. So later on, you see um, Liam Neeson buying that chicken off that guy, bro. Okay. And then you see that fool with no arms. Right. 
Bro, he's all scared, bro. Because he's going to lose his job to the chicken. Yeah, and then, dude, but there's a scene before he meets the chicken where the, he, he, Liam Neeson hooks over some fucking big titty bra after a show. Nice. And he's cheering her. <laughs> and he's cheering her up, bro. Yeah. And the, the food just like there with no arms. He can't even look. He just turns that motherfucker around. <laughs> Bro, at the when, when they're feed, when he's feeding the chicken, bro, when he's feeding the chicken, he realizes that he just bought two bags of feed. Yeah, and then he realized that I don't got I don't because he's feeding this guy with no leg. He's dressing him every right. day, and he's helping him out to use the restroom, bro. He ties that fool up and throws him in the river with a rock. No. Yeah, I think I saw part of this and I didn't see the ending because it's holy shit, dude. But that's how fucked up the circuit was, bro. Like, if you broke, if you're a trapeze guy, you break your arm, you can't do nothing, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? You're fucked. You're gonna be a geek or you're gonna carry, or you're gonna fucking clean up elephant shit. Start biting chicken heads off, bro. And I mean, that's also the thing, too, is like, I, I can't imagine the amount of rape that happened, dude. Like, like, you, like, uh, for the women. But just, I mean, imagine that big, uh, what is it thing? You know, he's all horny, bro, and he's not had no the pussy, geek? dude. It's not the geek. What's the one that? Strong man. The one that has a weird head that we, what is it? Pinhead. Or? Pinhead. Like, imagine. Now, I don't want to party with that guy. Bro, imagine he's around. And again, this is at a time, one of the reasons why they didn't like the circus was because of how clad scantily clad the women were like you couldn't even barely show ankles back then so they were showing a lot of stuff bro there's this big ass motherfucker bro who ain't got no pussy doesn't have all his senses together bro <laughs> you know what i mean dude like you wake up in the middle of the night and this thing's standing in your tr in your fucking train car and tells you he wants to get baptized yeah bro he wants that ass dude he's gonna get that ass how about that dude they call fat tom thumb nah Tom Tun. Tom Tun. Yeah, that's right. The big fat guy, dude. How about the big, big fat lady? The beer, the the bearded fat lady, bro. Like, she loses weight, bro. She can't work no more. This is an age too where deodorant is not a thing. Twelve hundred pound, my twelve hundred pound life. She would have been in the circus, huh? Easily, easily in the circus or bro, dead. I, I, I'm well, not, that's the thing is, or dead. I'm not saying I'm not trying to be stereotypical <laughs> or racist or mean. But any one of those people on 600 pound live, Peachy Barnum would have bought him off that family. Hardcore. And painted that fool like a whale and saved fun him. And he would have fucking taped that, his body to right. a fish, a real actual fish whale. Yeah. And saved fun a big ass well, mermaid. Uh, he like the, it, tell him about the monkey, bro. The uh, the monkey with the human face? We didn't finish the story about the, about the, about the mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mermaid was a monkey on. What was it like? Uh, they they sold a, a monkey head to a fish, fish body. Fish body. Yeah. And he called it the mermaid. Right, the mer uh, Fiji mermaid. And then people after they found out they didn't that there was a fake mermaid, they didn't even give a fuck because they want to see more shit. Um, so th that's the thing is there's one I read one where it was like um, it was like a cat or a dog with a human face. Did you read about this yeah. one? Where it was like just a guy, it's a guy with a fucked up like body, and then they put him in like a little fucking, like a little lion outfit or something, bro. How about the albino twins he kidnapped, bro? Yeah, dude. That's the thing is this guy, I mean, when you're the richest man on the planet, dude, I think you can get away with whatever you want. So he was just like kidnapping people and sending checks out later. Cause he yeah. was. This is dude. This is not back then. He could like that, that. His circuit could, wouldn't even play today, huh? Be a lot of violations, bro. A lot of AC, violations. Yeah, man. A lot animal of rights. Animal civil rights. rights. Dude, civil rights. Human immigration rights. Immigration rights. Immigration rights for sure. Um, Child Protective Act. He would uh, have to buy medicine for all those people, bro. He well, don't have to pay oh, no this medicine. is what I wanted to say earlier. Um... So the running away from home to join the circus is obviously that's a real thing, but where did that come from, bro? Because if you were a little kid and you didn't, and you really wanted to run away from home, you could go join the circus because there was no way to track. There's not any really way to track you after you left your 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 county. So if you ran away to go join the circus, not only because. Because it had weird-looking people. It had children-looking people. It had little people and midgets. So you could blend in in the circus. 
And um, child labor laws were not in effect at this time. So you could go run away, join the circus, and one of the like bearded ladies or somebody would say that you're their children. And you're literally just scooping elephant dung. That's mostly what their job was, was scooping elephant shit and fucking getting water for all the animals and stuff. Like, and, and then they were also used a lot of times to like fit, push up the tents and fix up the tents and stuff like that. How did ticket ticket sellers didn't make no money? Because <clears throat> because the PT of the circus people thought he's already ripping people off anyway, so he made his own side money. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, he was doing a lot of that, but he was also making money off of concessions and. How about the people that were scamming you with a little thing, bro? Like, remember, um, two three card Molly. Three card Monty, yes. Three card Monty. So there was the, some of that going on, but one of the things that he would do is like, okay, so he'd have like a guy that was like, a, it was called a cat collar, not a barker. Barkers were something else, and the collar would go, hey, come, come see the big two, two, uh, the lady with three legs and four eyes and two belly buttons or some shit like that, right? And they would be like. She could do this. She could do that. And then there's the lady that has electricity. And then you're like looking at all these banners that have like chicks, chicks with big tits. And again, this is a time when girls didn't even show off ankles. And and so it was like sexy and it was violent. And so it would get a crowd and he'd start calling. And then they'd have a guy planted in the audience. This is the hustle, bro. That's the guy who'd run up with his fucking money out, dude. I want to go first. No, 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 don't let me go first. And then somebody else would be like, I was just standing here. And then people would say, no, I want to go next. And then they would, then they would like, then everybody wanted to pay they to go. They were all in on it. Huh? Yeah, they were all in on it, dude. I heard he, 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 that line, a sucker is born every day, was not his line. No, it's not. Um, it, it's not his line, but... I think he was very indicative of it. We, like, there was like, and that again. It, the, the, I felt the same way with Napoleon reading all this stuff. Was like, because Napoleon took care of his family, he took care of his his friends, he made sure his mom was okay, he paid his servants well, and then when he left, he gave a lot of money to his servants. But he killed a lot of people. He invaded countries. He fucked over people. He fucking pillaged and raped and all that stuff. So was he a good guy or a bad guy? And it's the same thing with this dude. Is like, bro, he fucking, he helped like people that would never make money make a lot of money. He brought the zoos to the people that don't and see he, animals. And people were able to see animals. And like he, there was a lot of education coming out of it. And that museum he science. had. Yeah, there was a lot of science happening. He was bringing the, the Age of Enlightenment into the Americas. He became an aboli, aboli, abo, abolitionist. Abolitionist and as he, well. And Peachy yeah. tried to run. Peachy tried to run for. Um, Peachy Barnum tried to run for Senate, so he could um, vote on the Thirteenth Amendment because he wanted to end slavery. Well, and that's the other thing is that he was actually pretty liberal um, for the times, despite what he did. One of the things is is that he was one of the only places that black people could go and watch. And visit and also see Circus, black right? and see black musicians. Now we talk about jazz and the blues, but before the jazz and the blues, there was black circus musicians. Um, P. G. Lowry. P. G. Lowry. P. G. Lowry knew what was going on with P. T. Barnum and knew that P. T. Barnum was really open minded to black people, and he was a famous musician who went to the Boston Conservatory, and he uh, very smartly left after leaving the conservatory went to P.T. Barnum and made a deal to have a musical show. And so this was an outlet for black musicians. This was before vaudeville. This was before black vaudeville. All that stuff. The very first time you could see black musicians live was at a, a P.T. Barnum circus show. So, I mean, again, you go, well, he did all this bad stuff. And he definitely, ex I mean, he literally bought a human being, fucking put her on display, lied about her. Trucked her all over the, like an elderly senior citizen. <laughs> and then he at the end he cuts her open and goes, Let's see if this bitch is real. And then and and but then he turns around and he does stuff like that. So I mean, you know, again, here we have like an and a very like this guy was like this guy could have ran for president and won. You know, he 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 was very famous, very rich, very influential. If you guys see that movie, um proper history of gangs. Gangs of New York? Gangs of New York. During the big riot, because of the Civil War riot, they they, they burned down um, 
um, P.T. Barnum Museum. That's in right. The movie. That's how it got burned down, huh? And it, it burned down three, two, two times after that, but that was the first time it burned down. Can you look up the um, picture of this museum, dude? I would have, I would love to see something. It's like open this. now. It's it's in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Is it still there? Okay. Yeah. So there's also a carnival museum where the Ringling Brothers started out in. Um, I don't, Alfred. Uh, no, it's um. Bar- Ber, Bero, Berboa, Beroba, um, Baraboa, Wisconsin. And um, so they have a really cool circus museum there. It's one of the only places that you could still see animals under a big top. Um, they have the Ringling Brothers room. And it's, uh, it's basically the old Ringling Brothers who ended up buying uh, P.T. Barnum out. Because again, you know, as we get near the end of this thing, um, P.T. Barnum died and then they bought it P.T. Barnum was only like in possession of a circus for like 12 years He had the museum which we were looking up right now 30 years at the museum And that museum was nuts bro It was like a fucking dope ass warehouse with like animals They changed the game when he got into a circus Oh huh? bro cause well like that was This was also the era of like P.T. Barnum museums. hooked up with a guy named A British guy named Stephen Bailey I think they Right were. yes And um, there were the Barnum and Bailey circuit by itself Jim Bailey James Bailey Jim Bailey like he couldn't compete with Jim Bailey when right. he was, when when it was just P.T. Barnum, and then him and Jim Bailey they were um they got together man and they were kicking ass for a long ass time. Right, yeah, they were kicking ass for a while, and you know again he was only hey Bailey was no joke either, huh? Bailey, well Bailey was like okay, so there was like four guys that were running circuses back then, and it was it was James Bailey, P.T. Barnum, um what the fuck is this other guy's name, um. Andrew, uh, Aiden Farah, and um, it's something Sally, right? Or or Foyt, or yeah, that's who it is. Like, I'm, dude, my writing is so bad. Um, Fido, Farpa, Adam Far- Farpa, Adam Farpa, Farpa, or Farpa, something. yeah, yeah. Um, and like that guy's actually the father of the circus of the golden age of of circuses because yes. he's the one who apparently brought him to America, made him a big deal. He gets in bed with James Bailey. They start fucking having circuses together. P.T. Barnum comes along. Um, and and they're all like, hey, we got to fucking work out a thing here because we're stepping on each other. You know, and like at the time, you know, Wisconsin, dude, that's the other thing is Wisconsin, for some reason, had over 100 circuses based there. Damn. It was like the Silicon Valley of circuses. And circuses was like the internet of the time. They were hot. And so, like, uh, but these guys were the biggest ones, and P.T. Barnum had to par- par- partner up with them. At the same time, the Ringling Brothers are coming out. And the Ringling Brothers got into the circus business, not almost right away. They did, like, shows. And, you know, they were five brothers who knew how to sing, who knew how to, who knew how to like, dance, who knew how to do tricks, juggle, tame animals also, and shit. Also, one of the Ringling Brothers... You, you know, you know those big, show one of those big, big ass circus flyers, Philip. This guy was a master of making those flyers. Yes, they had a guy who made the flyer. I, I mean, kings like these guys. Like sometimes these guys will, will have the same circus in the same week. Go to that t- and, one and in the will, middle with the monkey in it, and they will paper the whole wall with one wall will be like five circuses showing up. And yeah. then PT will throw in his fucking um. Way ahead of time, he'll yeah, take up. One. He'll put that flyer all over the whole building. Put a, a the circus flyer on a building, huge one, man. Yeah, he he really was. But PT will show up and unload his fucking um, his train and have a big old circus parade, right? To pump everybody up. Yeah, yeah. He um, so he was the one who kind of invented putting him on train cars, but the Ringling Brothers came along. Yeah. The Ringling Brothers came along, and um, they they took advantage of the Intercontinental Railroad system, and it was the first time like a circus could go from one end of the country to another. And so the Ringling Brothers started making huge, huge gains, and they ended up have they ended up buying out. Uh, you know, after um, Adam Farpa died, he gave all his stuff over to Bailey, and then Bailey and Barnum. We're in bed together, and that was Barnum and Bailey Circus. And then the Ringling Brothers, after Barnum and Bailey died, 
uh, and uh, James, um, what's his name again? Vargas. Uh, <laughs> James Bailey kind of was getting old, and so they ended up buying everything off of him. And yeah. for for four hundred thousand, they bought Barnum and Bailey, um, uh, Barnum and ba- Barnum and Bailey Circus, and it became the Ringling Brothers Barnum, Barnum and Bailey, Bailey Circus. Circus. And when when they when the Ringling Brothers bought that circus together with, it was um oh it, it has uh, its name. It, it, it name? started uh, they started they had two circuses. They had the Ringling Brothers and the Barnum and Bailey Circus, and during the during the Great Depression. That's when they merged all circuses together, and people liked it so much. And that's what we have now, the Barnum and Bailey Circus, which the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, which ran for 146 years, yeah. and finally shut down in 2017. What was the original? Can you look up the original name? I was trying to find my phone right now. But What's your name for, what? for the uh, Ringling Brothers Circus? Because it was like Congress, like uh, Museum, Menagerie, Congress of Animals, and like it had this like super long name. Damn. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the name. Yeah. That's the name. Barney's Great Traveling Museum, Menagerie, Caravan, and Hippodrome. Yes. Hippodrome. Right yeah, now. dude. That's a crazy name, man. History for Fools, the big top, baby. That was fun, man. That was fun, that man. That was great. Big top. Also, the song from Pee Wee Herman, Big Top Adventure, that's, that's another actual, the original circus song. Play it for a little bit. 